Want to find diamonds the right way? Well, I have got a great tutorial lined up for you. I'm going to show you the six steps for effective diamond mining. And stick around to the end where I'm going to give you a demonstration of these very steps. See you there. Hello everyone, Purdue Matt here, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Practical Minecraft. Our goal is to present you with clear, concise, and on-topic tutorials in all things Minecraft to help you get the skills you want to succeed at the game. We'll deliver the core Minecraft skills you need broken down into their fundamental building blocks, presented in step-by-step -step tutorials for creating your world. And so, Speaking of on topic, let's get right to the point, which is diamonds, ranch mining. How do you get those little blue diamonds so quickly? Well, the answer is ranch mining. And not only is ranch mining a great way to find diamonds, but it's also a terrific way to build a nice stockpile of all the materials and resources for builds and creations you'll need later in the game. So I encourage you first to think about branch mining not only as a way of finding diamonds, but also gathering those oh so valuable resources. So without further ado, here are the six steps of branch mining and stick around to the end of the tutorial when I'll present a time-lapse demonstration of these tips in my own world. We can see how many total diamonds and other goodies I get such as gold, lapis, redstone, iron, coal, and all those other basic blocks that I harvest for my stockpile. All right, let's get going. Quiet on the set, quiet on the set. Here we go. Step one, caving versus mining. <laughs> you may have already watched a bunch of YouTube videos on the various mining strategies out there. Enough to know that there are basically two competing schools of thought on getting diamonds and resources. In the first camp, we have the cavers. Cavers believe you can easily get all the resources you need, including diamonds, by simply diving into the caves, braving the mobs as you go, and mining up any exposed coal, iron, and as the caves and ravines go deeper, things like diamond, redstone, and lapis. Uh, and in the second camp, we have the miners, uh, players who think of themselves as miners, and I consider myself amongst this group. Uh, dig to the bedrock, establish a hub, and then proceed to methodically mine out every resource between level 5 and 16 usually somewhere near their base. So I can hear you say it now. Which is better, Purdue Matt? Should I be a caver or a miner? Well, in truth, I say do both. Very early in the game, before you've accumulated many resources, go caving. Focus on coal and iron, but don't worry too much about finding diamonds yet. Of course, if you find them, great. And also, don't forget about loot chests and generated structures. They're also a great source of easy iron. But the bottom line is, before you even think about establishing a branch mine, use caving and exploring to get at least some of the following. You want a full set of iron armor and weapons. You want a full set of iron tools with multiple pickaxes and a couple of stacks each of things like coal, logs, torches, and food. And so once you have all these items, you're ready to establish your base and to start your mine. Which brings us to step two, where to mine. Now that you've done some caving, looting, and exploring, have all the armor, tools, and food you need, you're ready to establish your base and your mine. But where should you establish it? Well, the good news is when it comes to finding diamond, gold, lapis, and redstone, for the most part, it really doesn't matter which biome you choose. Most of them, with a couple of exceptions, I'll mention in a second, are about the same. So just choose whatever your favorite place is. But now the exceptions. If emeralds are on your wish list for mining, make sure you establish your base in or very close to any type of mountain biome and make sure your branch mine is also within or at least extends into that mountain biome. Emerald ore only generates in mountainous biomes, so if you're not sure what biome you're in, you can always hit function F3 to see it. If it has the word mountain in it, you're probably good to go. If you don't establish your mine in a mountainous biome, you can still get emeralds, but you'll have to trade with villagers, kill some pillagers, or find them in loot chests, so just keep that in mind. Next, 
perhaps gold's high on your priority list. Maybe you want to corner the market on golden carrots and apples, or perhaps you want piglins to absolutely love you and give you all sorts of great trades. Well, if that's the case, then you might want to establish your mine in a Badlands biome, formerly known as the Mesa biome. In truth, I'm kind of surprised when I learn a lot of players don't actually know this, but the spawn rate of gold is much, much higher in the Badlands. Look at how much gold ore is on this screenshot. Gold will spawn at a much more dense rate and as high as level Y79 in the Badlands biome as opposed to a maximum height of Y32 in other biomes. All the other resources spawn at about the same rate and depth, but gold is much easier to get here. Which brings us to step three, preparing to mine. In step one, if you caved, looted, and harvested all of the resources mentioned, then good for you. If not, go back to step one. Go on. Off with you. Go on. Off with you. All right. For those of you who actually did gather that list of resources, congratulations. You're ready to prepare your mind. So before you start this next step, you might well actually want to build a house first and maybe start a wheat and sugar cane farm and get some cows to breed. There's actually a reason for this. The leather from the cows and paper from the cane will come in handy when it comes to making books and bookcases so you can create an enchantment table and an enchantment station to upgrade your tools as you mine. So get those things going before you start to dig your own mine down to bedrock. If you completed step one, you have most of what you need when it comes to wood and iron. In addition to those things, you need to craft some of the following. You'll need a bunch of ladders if you're going to dig a straight down access shaft. You want some chests for storing things down your mine. Six to eight should do it. You'll want six or so regular furnaces for smelting cobblestone into clean stone. A couple blast furnaces for your ores and a couple of water buckets for dealing with lava. When we add those items to our other stuff from step one, your mining supply chest look, should look something like this. So now, you're actually ready to start digging with step four, digging the access shaft. So before you can dig down to your branch mine, you kinda gotta get yourself down to bedrock first. So stated simply, you got to dig yourself an access shaft. In my opinion, you've got two good options here. You can either make a ladder base shaft leading straight down. When I do this, I like to make mine three by three with levels every so often to catch me if I fall off the ladder. Or you can make what I like to call a reversing staircase going down with landings every so often. Just make sure your staircase is tall enough that you don't whack your forehead on blocks as you go down. No, seriously, don't be that guy. Don't be that player who, ow, wait, no, stop, oh, ow, please, no. stop, it. No. that hurts, ow, my head, no. ah, stop, ah. No. <laughs> don't worry, I'm okay. Either way, work your way down to level Y equals eight. Now, if you've watched other videos on branch mining, I know that many people say level Y12 is better because it helps you uh, stay above the lava pockets that form near bedrock, bedrock. However, I say that's bad advice and I'll show you why. As you can see from this graph, diamonds and redstone both spawn below level Y16. So just looking at this, if it keeps you out of the lava, level Y12 kinda makes sense, right? But here's why Y12 is a bad idea. As you can see here, diamond distribution starts to decrease starting on level Y13. So if you're standing on Y12, then you're going to hit fewer diamonds. Level Y8 gives you a much better shot at finding diamonds because they're more dense at that level. Yeah, it means you'll run into more lava pockets, but in my opinion, lava's easy enough to deal with. I'd rather have more diamonds, so while lava is annoying at times, I'm willing to deal with it. I believe it's a reasonable trade-off. Okay, so have you reached level eight yet? Awesome, congratulations. Now you're ready for step five, establishing your mine hub. When you reach level Y8 or whatever level you choose to start at, you need to establish your mine hub. Your hub is kind of like your mine headquarters. 
In this cutaway model where I've removed all the blocks above my head, you can see how I set up my mine hub here. I prefer to centrally locate the hub with my ladder coming down in the middle of the room. I then create starter tunnels in all four directions as a reminder of where I want to start my tunnels when I start branching. That way, if I happen to hit a ton of lava, I can just abandon that tunnel and pick another direction to go in. Easy. And when that's done, you'll want to place all your chests. Find a spot for your crafting table furnaces and blast furnaces. You'll want the regular old style furnaces for cooking smooth stone and the blast furnaces for your ores like gold and iron. I tend to smelt as I go, which is why it's handy to have these set up in your mind so you don't have to keep going up and down your ladder to the surface to do it. So now finally, we've gathered our starter tools, we've chosen our location, and created a mind cap, we've dug down to bedrock and established our hub. Whew, that was a ton of fun work. And now we're ready to start branch mining. Ha ha! We're ready for step six, branch mining. All right, we're ready to branch mine, woo! So let's head back to our cutaway mine. It's called branch mining because looking from above, the pattern you mine kind of looks like a tree. You have a main tunnel or trunk with smaller branches coming off of it. We start by digging the trunk of our branch mine. This could be as wide as you want. I typically dig the trunk about 30 blocks or so by placing 10 torches on the wall every three blocks with one extra block on each end. So now that you have the trunk done, you're ready for the branches. Again, there are various schools of thought on this, but in reality, it really comes down to personal preference. Some players like to space their branches every four blocks with three blocks separating each branch instead of two. The reason there is they say that diamonds tend to form in pockets of at least two deep. So you should be able to see all diamond pockets with three blocks between branches instead of two. However, there's still a really small chance that a diamond pocket may only be one deep. So even though unlikely, I tend not to want to miss these. So I space them three apart. Spacing the branches four apart might save you a little bit of wear and tear on your tools, but really I think it's splitting hairs. I dig all of my branches just as one by two tunnels, but they don't stay that way. And I'll explain why in a second. Once you've decided on the length of your branches, if you want to keep them consistent, here is a time-saving pro tip. Once you've established your first branch, create a stop signal for the adjacent branch by digging over and placing a torch at the spot where the next branch should stop. That way, you don't have to count blocks in the next tunnel. Just dig as fast as you can until you hit the torch. Brilliant! Now for my little twist on branch mining to help you get every single diamond you can between level Y4 and Y16. To illustrate this, let's look at a cutout side view of one of our branches. So here's the trunk tunnel going into the wall, and this is our branch going this way. After you've dug your one by two branch, go back to the beginning of the branch and look at the ceiling, and then dig straight up as far as your pick will go, which will be five blocks, grabbing all the valuables and resources as you go. Pillar up if necessary. You've now harvested all the resources between block seven and 16, the maximum level for diamonds. But we're not done in this branch yet. There still might be diamonds below us. So once you've finished digging straight up to Y16, then go back to the beginning of the branch, dig down to level Y5, and then dig out those blocks in the branch. Congratulations, you've now harvested all the diamonds and other good stuff between levels Y4 and Y16. And once you hit those first diamonds, it's usually a good investment to immediately make a diamond pickaxe, which will only speed things up and will help you mine some obsidian. And once you have some obsidian, two extra diamonds, sugar cane, and leather, you can craft yourself an enchantment table and bookcases to go with it. It's never a bad idea to create an enchantment station inside your mine. The sooner you can enchant that diamond pick, the better return you're going to get for your time and effort inside the mine. Fortune 3 and Efficiency 4 is where it's at. Crafting an anvil will also allow you to combine enchantments. So upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. 
Upgrade as soon as you can within the game and to maximize your mind's output. Even if you don't have many bookcases or even zero bookcases, still throw down that enchantment table and get that what enchantments you can. Even a level one enchantment will make you more efficient. You can always upgrade to higher levels later. There you have it. You now have everything you need to squeeze the maximum number of diamonds and other resources out of your mind. So let's move on to that time lapse of me applying these very principles. Now for this demo, I want to upgrade my tools as quickly as possible as I'm mining to maximize my output. So let's see how many diamonds and other goodies I can get with a 30 block trunk and 30 block branches on either side of the tunnel. All right, we're gonna do a little color commentary as we're mining. So I am digging here a straight down shaft. Gathering all the materials as I go. So you want to leave nothing unmined because you never know when you're going to hit diamond. There I was just placing down a chest to empty my inventory. I was starting to get uh, full of cobble. Placing those landings every 10 or so blocks to catch me if I fall. And we're really flirting with that ravine right there. Hey, there's a diamond. And now we're at Y equals 8. So we're establishing our mine hub. Uh, having to deal with a lot of gravel there. It's just uh, unfortunate that uh, the gravel happened to coincide with where we wanted to put our mine hub, but we dealt with it. And as you can see here, as I was uh, you know, finishing the hub, uh, we found a, a diamond tucked away up into the corner I didn't even notice. So what we have here is I'm collecting uh, obsidian and I'm getting some paper and harvesting our cows so that I can establish my enchantment station so I get my very first first enchantment here I actually enchanted two picks I got uh, one pick that had um, efficiency two and uh, unbreaking two on it and then I, another pick that had uh, efficiency two on it. So uh, I just kept both uh, picks in my inventory. So we are, we've got our, we already have our trunk established and we are now working on our branches, going and feeding the cows again so that uh, we can upgrade our enchantment station, maybe get better enchantments later on found our first diamonds in those first three branches. But since we didn't have fortune, that was just one diamond per uh, diamond, diamond ore. Lighting up a little cave I found there. So Oh, here getting uh, some more uh, cows going. But this is a good shot of you know how you do your two by one tunnel and then you dig straight up. And then when you have finished digging straight up, you dig down to Y5. Now, unfortunately, I didn't find any more diamonds on this side, however, it was about this time that I realized that I could combine enchantments on an anvil. So I decided to finish this one and then go get the cows. I harvest them and we're going to go upgrade our, gonna add a few more uh, uh, bookcases to our enchantment table. And you notice I put down a grindstone because I wasn't ha happy with the enchantments I was getting. So I kept trying until I got fortune two. And I also combined my enchantments on the two first picks I had. So now I have efficiency three and I'm breaking. So I'm going a little faster. And pretty soon right here, the first fortune two enchantment will pay off for us as we find our first block of eight diamond ore blocks. Taking care of some lava there. Now we got about 15 diamonds out of that uh, group of eight uh, diamond ore blocks. So fortune two really pays off. The faster you can get it, the better off you're going to be.
right about here for demo purposes, I decided to you know, get some nice close-up shots of digging down the Y5. And um, this is, I think this is a nice shot of how you dig up and dig down on your branch. And right there, I find another bit of diamond. And there's actually a pretty nice dense package of, uh, you know, a couple diamond clusters, I guess if you would want to call it in this area. So I'm taking, <laughs> again, you know, taking care of the lava here. This is just, uh, you know, I'd much rather deal with the lava than give up on some diamonds. But you'll see, I believe, right around here, I find, yep, there's another bit of diamond. And as I'm digging this way, I notice that there was another diamond, a couple diamond blocks tucked right there. And that will do it. This is the last branch, or next to last branch. And then uh, this next one is the final branch. So we'll see how many diamonds I got out of this in just a second. Hope you enjoyed. So here we are in our mine. We're going down the trunk with our branches on either side already complete. And let's just take a quick look at how we did. So I've removed everything. Well, actually, no, I haven't removed everything from our chests. Well, let's see how we did. So let's start over here with the cobblestone. As you can see, we got nearly a chest full of cobblestone. That will come in very handy for builds. And I smelted as I went. So here I have a, about a half chest full of smooth stone that was smelted. Uh, one advantage of doing this uh, as you mine is that the experience that you get from simply smelting uh, will help you get enchantments uh, and to upgrade your tools as you are mining. So a little bit of dirt there and some other, the granite and the andesite and so on. But uh, yeah, these are empty. So here is the treasure chest, all the good stuff. Well, so let's see how we did for diamonds. We got almost a full stack of diamonds out of that mine. Uh, more than a stack, if you consider that I spent about 12 diamonds on picks. So this started off as three picks. I combined two on the anvil to get myself an efficiency three and an unbreaking pickaxe and one fortune pickaxe and uh, about two-thirds of the way through the mine I ended up repairing this pick with three diamonds from this so add another 12 to this uh, 63 and that's how many diamonds I got so we got 20 uh, emeralds we have 42 ingots of gold about a stack and a half of iron ingots uh, about three and a little uh, about two-thirds stacks of uh, lapis lazuli, just a ton of redstone. Uh, redstone's uh, pretty easy to come by down in the lower parts of the mine. And uh, about four and a little bit more than uh, than that of coal. Though I did get a lot more coal than this because, uh, to be honest, I ended up using a lot of my coal in the furnaces as I was smelting. So I probably ended up getting about twice or maybe even three times as much uh, coal but I just ended up using a lot of it. So there we go. There we have it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode and look forward to future Practical Minds My Minecraft episodes as we are looking to grow this channel. So check us out. And as always, folks, enjoy your own adventures. Enjoy our adventures with us. And until next time, ciao.